How's it going guys? Cloud Wolf here and today we are going to be covering my special um, item structure saver which has been a bit pandantic. Uh, people got a bit confused by what I meant by that but I guess you'll see today. So the item structure saver basically is able to save structures such as this to an item uh, in a relatively fast fashion. It's very fast but size can affect it. Um, but anyway, so to get it, you just have to go to the downloads and copy the .zip into your data packs folder, type reload in the world, and then click on the uh, sub menu because you might have other uh, things in this genre because this is a um, map makers toolbox. But anyways, so if I click menu, it'll take me to the real menu and you can get the tools start and end. That's all you have. So I can click put the start down somewhere. Um, so let's let's do some examples in here. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this tree. So I'm gonna put the start here. I'm gonna put the end. Well, I might need some blocks to platform myself. All right, put the end there. And then I'm gonna click save. Now I'm gonna move the start to somewhere else and it works just like a, um, like a slash clone does. So I can click load and it'll move the tree, structure loaded. Um, so there's a little progress bar, but you'll see that maybe come into play later. Anyway, so this seems fairly uh, pretty much the same as anybody else's uh, data packs that accomplish this kind of editor stuff, maybe a little bit less polished. But uh, in, you may think, well, why don't you just type slash clone? Well, this thing isn't really meant to be used on such a small scale. We actually have a much better scale and a much uh, better application for it. So that's actually transferring things between worlds. So you have this beautiful thing called the toolbar. Uh, save toolbars and you can save items to the toolbar and as you might have seen there's these buttons so we have save export import load cancel get tools and config I'll show you what there is in the config later but you can export the file the item and it will export this tree as an item structure and it tells me the size here and basically what I can do is I can do c3 and then once I do C3, it might lag a little bit because I have a really big structure here that I'll show you later. Um, but there you go, it's a 97 by 34 by 84. Uh, but it saves them to this line. So now I can actually hop into another world and this tree will effectively be transferred into that world without using a structure block. And before, I'm sure people are already typing in the comments before they watch the video, because that happens. Um, but this is actually useful because basically, Structure blocks have a limitation of 32 by 32 by 32 size. And uh, let me get this one. X, uh, X3. All right. So structure blocks have a limitation of 32 cubed size. And you have to save the file, copy the file from one folder, copy it into another world structures folder, and then put a structure block down and go to load, which is actually a fairly long process, especially if you have something that's bigger by 32 cubed. Uh, that green block is a 32 cubed, and I'll show you how fast it is to copy that. And then this is a 32, 64 cubed. And the 64 cubed does take some time. Uh, I am recording, so keep in mind that all these times are going to be at least two times faster for use if you're not recording. Um, but it, it's fast. I can tell you that it is probably faster than you placing four, eight, sorry, eight structure blocks down, clicking save on all of them with different names, copying those eight files into the next world, and then putting all the loads uh, in the correct corners and clicking load on all of them. So anyways, let's go ahead and import this guy. So we'll go here, we'll go to menu. So this is our tree. Uh, you can rename them in a anvil so that you remember what they are. And the reason I put them as diamonds is just because the original one from about a year ago that I tried to make, I used diamonds. So I'm just kind of using that legacy system and I like diamonds. Um, I would use structure blocks, but maybe you're using them and then they get confused and uh, you have the functionality of being able to place them. You don't want to be able to place this item. Um, but yeah, it could really be any item anyway. Um, but let's see, we can go import. If you don't have anything, then it will just say failed but I imported it. So now I put a start point down and then we just click load. And there you have your tree. It's a different colored because it's a different biome, but just like you would expect. Now, I also saved this house uh, to another structure item, which is the 436. And uh, I was gonna show that, but that's okay. We don't need to. Um, anyways, so there's one more cool trick that I'll show you before we go on to the crazy thing. 
okay? So these are the settings. There's only two settings at the moment, but I will expand this in the future. I'm just working on a map. So there's masked, so we can turn masked on. These settings are off by default. Um, mask will actually make it load faster. So let me go ahead and put them, if it's unmasked, uh, I guess it'll be better to show you undo first. So if you turn undo on, it allows an undo feature. I wouldn't use this for big structures, but small structures for sure. So I'm gonna put this down and I'm gonna click load. And it completely deleted that. That sucks, right? So let me click undo. Now it's back to where it was. So it basically just plays the save, saves it to a different location than the current location, and then undo lets you load from that location. Uh, it's basically just doing save and load at the same time. So if you do load with save enabled, it's gonna take longer because it has to save the current area first. So we said undo because we don't want to delete this thing entirely. So now we want to actually mask it. So if you do it masked, that will basically say anywhere that there's air in the structure you're loading, don't put a block of air. So if you click load, it will actually, as you could see, anywhere that there was air in this structure, um, it didn't override. So there was air here, so it didn't override the obsidian. But we still don't like that, so we're going to just... Oh, <laughs> I think I clicked the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, so it does effectively override but I accidentally click load as well I mean save as well so anyway let's look at that now um, so in terms of large structures I guess we'll stress test so you guys can see so we'll go up here and we'll go up here this is a 32 by 32 and I'm gonna click save and this time you're actually gonna see a progress bar it tells you the size here um, usually this progress bar is way faster though when you're not recording so that wasn't too bad honestly so now we're gonna load it uh, let me do I think I think this will fill it to air, yes. So that's gone. Now let me do load from here. And uh, export import takes zero time at all, except for the lag that you might have. So there, so this actually did it with undo. So this has undo enabled, which is kind of cool. So even with undo enabled, a 32 cubed is fairly fast. And I'm gonna click undo and you'll see it start to delete from the bottom up. Oh shoot, but I have masks on. <laughs> undo with masked has some, uh, issues because of the whole loading with uh masked so there you go you gotta turn masked off when you're using undo because it has some things that it can't properly do right uh, it's just because of it's a weird it's a weird combination but anyways so now let's actually load a i would stress test this guy i'll show you i i did already i'd show you it but it's just not really fun so we're gonna top tp to a really high coordinate and we're going to load something that's a lot more fun. So this is something I copied from another world. It's 97 by 34 by 84. This is something I copied from this survival world that you saw earlier. So I'm gonna import it and I'm gonna put the start down right here and we're gonna go ahead and let this just time lapse over. And I guess in the recording, I will uh, do like some kind of a time lapse while it's loading, but it's I'll give like the actual time it took. So as you can see that the progress bar actually broke and that's just because it's really hard to estimate the amount of commands things take because there's a bug in the game where slash function doesn't return the amount of commands it used. Um, but yeah, that wasn't too bad. I think it was about 30 seconds to a minute. And the reason it took so long was because this chunk that I copied actually had falling blocks that were floating. So that caused a lot of entities to spawn, uh, which is really the main thing that made it kind of laggy. Um, but yeah, it wasn't too bad, and I even did it with undo on, so I can get rid of this thing. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, this kind of thing, you probably wouldn't want to use undo on, because it's just so large, so just make sure that you're careful with it, and you load the right structure. Uh, just double check. Um, but yeah, so this is just like a very big structure test. So, that's pretty much all this data pack can do. There might be a few bugs, um, but at least the core features are work, and it's good. The undo can have some issues that I'll probably work on to fix. I would mainly just run it this with this method without the undo, unless you're working on smaller things like 32 cubed sized. Um, but anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope, hopefully you found this uh, useful and you can find some use for this. I definitely will. Uh, if you guys like this, leave a like on the video, maybe subscribe. And uh, anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace.